Oh my goodness. Welcome to day two of the spring style challenge. We are talking all about style vision. I could not love your participation, your encouragement, your inspiration to each other and your energy more than I do. I logged into Facebook this morning and I saw all of you guys posting your outfits from yesterday. I saw your encouragement to each other and I'm like, yes, this, this is why I do this. Style is a skill that we can learn, but it's also something that is ever evolving for two reasons. One, because we are always evolving and two, trends and times and seasons always make style something that is evolving, right? So we want to make sure that we always keep it. It's not like every day something has to be new in the front of our minds, but at the beginning of each season, I do think it's important to do a refresh of like, why am I doing this? Does it align with who I want to be? Does my closet reflect the woman I'm becoming? Does my style work for me? Do I need to adjust something, add something, take away something? Just to, you know, keep it fresh, keep it modern, keep it interesting, and make sure that you are showing up the way that you intend to show up. And one of the best ways to do that is to keep a style vision. Now, I do believe this your style vision is something that should stay at the forefront of your mind daily. Uh, Joelle has shown you guys her mood boards. And I know you guys love those. So what I've done for today is you're going to get a link to a template in Canva that Lisa made all of us. She's on my team. And right now there's like a little quote and it says, um, it says like dress, like your future depends on it or something like that. And you can change that. That's just what I have in there. Um, you can change the colors and you can make your own vision board, your style vision board, your mood board, whatever you want to call it. Same difference. And I would want to, I do want to encourage you to keep that in your closet so that every day when you're getting dressed, you are reminded, this is the vibe we're going for. This is the energy we're going for. This is the woman I'm showing up as. So as you make your board, I want you to pull images and quotes that speak to you, that evoke a certain feeling the way that you want to feel. Not just like, oh, that's a really nice car and a beautiful house and I like her outfit. Like that's all fun and games, but it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything for you. Making sure that your vision board is a reflection of your personal style and where you're taking it. And redoing these each season is really gonna keep, keep you at the top of your game. And it doesn't take a lot of time. You, you do it, take about... 30-ish minutes, go on Pinterest, go on the internet, get those images, upload them into Canva, make your little board. You can even make one, like resize it for your phone wallpaper if you wanted to. I think I might do that. Um, a coach of mine earlier this year did that and I really liked it and I need to do it again and update for spring. So I would encourage you to do that. Just keeping your goals at the forefront of your mind, not just your style goals, but your style as you know, is a tool to, it, it can be a catalyst, a tool to get you there to those goals quicker. It's something that you use. It's a tool you have in your back pocket, but it's not the whole picture. So keeping those goals so that you are showing up the way you want to with intention, because sometimes what happens is like, oh, when I get the money, the job, the body, the time, et cetera, et cetera, then I will start showing up as her. What? That's not the way it works. You're going to wait forever for all of those stars to align. You need to create that time now by showing up as her. Yesterday, we talked about style standards. And if you can see yourself, then you can believe some new in a new way. You can believe something new about yourself, which means you're going to act and show up in a new way, the way that you want to with intention. So it's that cycle, right, of think, feel, act. So if you think this way about yourself, you're going to feel this way about yourself and you're going to act this way. And that can be a really great thing or it can be a really awful thing because you can stop showing up and stop seeing yourself and stop believing in yourself because you, you are not giving yourself the evidence that you're not telling your brain, oh yeah, when you look down like at, or in the mirror, I am that woman, you are giving your brain evidence that you are not the woman, that you should wait and that you're not worthy yet. But we know that's not true, right? So I'm getting ahead of myself and my notes here a little bit. But 
I want to make sure that you have such a clear and confident style vision that you are able to live in alignment from the outfit you wear to the habits and routines that you create in your life. I want everything to be in alignment with this vision you have for your life. And if you have a vision for your life and you know you're called to a purpose, I heard this on a podcast the other day. The woman said, it is your responsibility to protect that vessel that gets you there. So creating habits and style that are in alignment with our goals, because our goals are the purpose that we feel called to, right? That is your responsibility. Take care of yourself. Take care of this vessel that is going to get you where you are going. And part of that is respecting and caring for yourself enough because you are worthy to get dressed. And as we know, it's not the destination, right? The destination is great. It sounds great to say when I reach that goal of enough money, enough weight loss, enough time, enough energy, et cetera, et cetera, then I will do the thing. But really, that's just an excuse. It's just procrastination wrapped up in a pretty bow, thinking that, oh, we could push it off tomorrow. Tomorrow. My two-year-old always says, I'm like, let's get dressed. She goes, two minutes, we get dressed tomorrow, tomorrow. I'm like, no, we're not getting dressed tomorrow, girlfriend. We're getting dressed today. We're putting on the clothes today. You can't go to school in pajamas. <laughs> and it always reminds me like, oh, she's like a little version of me because how many times have I said tomorrow? You know, my my like phrase was always Monday. Monday, we start Monday. Diet starts Monday. Exercise starts Monday. We get dressed Monday. We clean our closet Monday. We get our life organized on Monday. Monday, everything happens. And what actually happens on Monday? Nothing. Because I'm paralyzed by the thought of doing all the things at once. So spare yourself from the mistakes I have made and start showing up today creating those small habits that are going to equal big results because what you're going to need to be doing is giving your brain the evidence it needs to prove to yourself that you are the woman who does the things you want to do. Um, we all know that if we want to feel a certain way, we have to show up a certain way. We have to be able to see ourselves that way. We can't just not take a shower and throw your hair up and put on leggings and just like hope that we're going to look in the mirror and feel like the best version of ourselves, right? It just doesn't work that way. Like I said, it works in, in that circular cycle of you have to be able to see yourself to believe, to feel, to act. And using style as a tool is going to help you get there because we talked about this yesterday that you get who you are. You don't get what you want. And another way to look at that is you get what you give. What kind of energy are you giving out? Are you that energetic match for what you're looking for? I know this to be true in dating. I was single and 30 something and, oh man, I just, my heart goes out to anyone dating over 30. <laughs> it is not an easy journey. And I was trying all these things with no data behind it. No, just like, I just want to be married. I just want to be married. I'm going to get too old. I just want to be married. And I read this book, actually, that really helped me get my mindset in the right place to be the person that the person I was looking for was looking for. And that concept changed my entire life. I kid you not, between that and some prayer and fasting, I met my husband in like, like that. Like once I became that person, I was an energetic match for the person who was looking for me. It just, it was wild. And so I know, and part of that was getting dressed. Some of my friends at the time were like, you say you're a stylist, but you don't look like one. You need to change it. Switch that up. And I did. And it changed everything because my confidence was switched from being like, oh, I need to be this perfect woman for this guy. And 
And I was always thinking about a guy, like, right? Like, I want to meet a guy. I want, he's going to make everything's magically going to be different. And when I took my focus off of giving my power away and just enjoying my life, really honing in on my career and having fun with my friends and getting dressed in a way that made me feel good and professional and confident, I lost weight. My face cleared up. I started making more money. I met my future husband. Like, it just, is wild how when we take so much of the folk give we take so much of that focus of giving the power away to when things are perfect and we start looking into ourselves and realize we can create that it's just I know it feels hard a new skill a new habit it feels like a lot and it feels hard but it can be done it is a wild ride and I want to challenge you you're here. So I'm going to challenge you to do that and think about what could you possibly be missing out on pursuing by lacking confidence in your style? What could that look like for you? So when you take a few moments tonight and you get some alone time, don't make it more than it needs to be. You, you really just need like 30 minutes of me time. Pour your favorite drink in a cute little glass and turn on some music and curate some photos, some inspirational quotes, whatever it takes for you to put together that board so that you can have a plan and you can have clarity and keep that clarity at the forefront of your mind. Um, becoming a match for what you want. Living in alignment. I'm going all over the place on my notes, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm getting so excited about this. I'm just like, another thing I want to sprinkle in there is gratitude. So we talked about some of the things we want to do on a daily basis during this week, definitely getting ready, um, but also maybe moving our body and hydration and reading. Another thing is gratitude. That energy, if you want to talk about being an energetic match to what you want, gratitude. Maybe you don't feel like the most stylish version of yourself yet, but you can get there and be grateful that you're doing the work and you're looking inward and you're creating a vision and you're setting a standard and you are becoming the most stylish version of yourself. And maybe part of that is your body. Like maybe you don't love all the parts of your body. Newsflash, I don't think anyone does and we never will, <laughs> but we can dress it well and we can dress our bodies in a way that is the most flattering that we can appreciate our bodies and be grateful for what they do for us. And we can put cute clothes on it so that we see that reflection literally reflects even more gratitude versus like hiding it. So having gratitude, I think is essential for the process because getting to that, that end result is going to go a lot faster if you have gratitude for where you're at. There is that living in duality of being content with what you have, but also wanting more, right? I want you to think about what she looks like, this version of you. When you're putting together your, your board and you're creating your vision, what is she doing in her day? And what is she wearing when she's doing those things? What are the habits that she has and how can you build those habits into your life? And what do you wear when you do those habits? How can you make sure that you are in alignment with who you're becoming? Have you guys ever heard, I've heard a lot of this on podcasts and read a lot of it in books about our reticulator, ret the RAS, reticular activating system. <laughs> that talks about giving ourselves, giving our brains the evidence, right? It's going to look for evidence for what you're believing and what you're thinking. So if you are thinking like, I don't deserve this, I don't look good, I don't feel good, your brain is going to look for that evidence all day long. If you start your day getting dressed, looking in the mirror and thinking about, oh, I actually look good. I feel good. I've got this. I can do this. I can reach my goals. Your brain is going to continue to filter out things throughout the day to gather evidence to remind you, to keep telling you, you are worthy of this. You are confident. You do look great. You do feel great. You are going to reach these goals. And so you get the choice first thing 
to use your closet as a tool to catapult you into what you want or to keep you stuck where you are, to keep moving forward or to stay back and keep making excuses. You have the choice to do that, which I think is so cool. You can use your clothes however you want to, but we have to get dressed. So why not use them for your good? Why not use them to get what you want out of life and use them as a way to tell your brain, I am her. I, I can act that way. I can reach those goals. Does that first glance in the mirror is going to do so much for the rest of your day. You know you're already worthy, but we can be so hard-headed and we can be our own worst critic and we we can know fundamentally, like, yes, I am worthy. But feeling that and walking that out and believing it, do you know my favorite thing about styling when, whether it usually happens in one-on-one settings, I get to see it somewhat here, but I get to see the actual process and journey when I work with someone one-on-one of the moment when they go from doubting themselves to believing in themselves, from feeling a little bit wonky and awkward about like, should I say I look cute? Can I say I look cute? Is that a thing? Like, is she going to think I'm weird? Do I believe myself if I say it? You can tell she's thinking like all these things in her head, like, fine, I'll show you a video. Fine, I'll put on the pants for you. Fine, I'll do it. And then she's like, oh, okay. Oh, it's kind of cute. I kind of like it. I look really good in this. It is this evolution of self-confidence and the way that a woman looks at herself and being able to watch that process in real time is like the biggest honor of my career. It is such an emotional and personal journey, but I know it's one that we all go through. And if you're new here, sometimes it can feel awkward to take that photo and post it in the group. It can feel weird to ask for feedback and show up to be seen in that vulnerable, but that process is so important to your style journey. I can't even tell you. And the fact that you guys get to do that together, you get to be in this community where you are vulnerable and encouraging to each other and you're going on this journey together, it is one of the most special things for me to witness. I love it so, so much. So that process, it looks different in a group than one-on-one, but it is like sacred in my world. It is the reason I do what I do because I know once you've crossed that bridge from like should I, can I, will I say I look good too? I really love my outfit. I look good. You've nailed it. Like you're going places, girl. You've got it. You are walking out of your front door, a new woman, and there's no stopping you. And sometimes we lose our momentum. We lose sight of our vision. We lose sight of alignment because life is lifing. And that is where this is going to come into play to reel you back in to bring you back to your goals when life feels big and chaotic and it's just lifing and reminding you every morning in your closet, you've got this. This is where you're going. This is who I am. This is what I do. I get dressed. I'm going to use style as a catalyst to get me where I'm going. Because you cannot expect to nail your style without a clear vision, right? We know that. It's like the first step in the 10-step process, you need to know why you're doing this and where you're going and what you want before you ever start shopping. There's like seven steps before you ever start shopping. If you know what you want, you have a clear vision for what you want, you can save money. That's a huge one because you're not just, I'll buy this and I'll buy this and I'll buy this. And you don't feel like you're filling a void with new clothes. You can actually wear the clothes you've curated because they make you feel so good. You can be obsessed with your own style instead of filling that void with the noise of like, she's so cute and she's so cute and she's so cute. You can be confident in the fact that you're cute. You look good in those pants and you can style them three different ways and you can show up for your day and not give the power away. Just you can believe that you are worthy of looking good and you have the confidence to say that you look good and know you look good. You can have high standards. 
once you have that clarity, you can set those standards of like, okay, we're not setting these low bar standards anymore. Anymore, We are going over here. We've got high standards for our style. And you can have that clarity of who you're becoming. And when you know who you're becoming, showing up as her every day, even when it feels like a lot and it feels hard, it's worth it. You know it's worth it. You know where you're going. You have a goal in mind. You're not just throwing spaghetti at the wall. You are able to be confident in who you're becoming. A true reflection of who you're becoming needs to be shown in your closet. If your closet is not a true reflection of that mood board, that vision board, you've got some work to do. And that's okay. It doesn't need to be done overnight, but at least you've got that data to work with so that you can truly embody the confidence that you want to embody to step out each and every day. Because if you've got too much stuff that's not working, that is feels like it's holding you back, it doesn't fit you, it doesn't fit your style, it doesn't fit where you're going, you just need to clear that out. You need to clear it out. It doesn't belong because you are not going to be able to embody confidence if you sprinkle in outfits that you don't love, right? We don't need to keep clothes just to keep clothes. Um, and I know that because confidence is a skill or style is a skill, sorry, and having confidence in that skill can feel a little bit clunky. It can feel a little bit wonky at first, but once you start implementing it and you're getting the coaching and you're showing up and you're doing it, you're creating that momentum and you are aligning with your vision and then you have unstoppable, unstoppable confidence. Think of it like studying for a test or practicing for a big sports game, right? You've got kids in sports, most of you, if they show up for practice and they practice the skill, they get better and better and better for the big game. But if you were to show up to take a test and not study or show up for a big game and never practice, you're not going to win. You're not going to score well. You are practicing style and you're practicing these, this skill every day and you are curating that unstoppable confidence. You are winning because you're doing it and you're creating that momentum. And I am so proud of you for doing that and for creating this non-verbal cue. Style, what does Rachel Zoe say? That style is saying who you are without saying a word. And it's so true. It can be that cue to how professional you are at work, to how confident you are in your skills at work or whatever it might be. But I think even in motherhood, it can show confidence in your skills as a mom to your kids because our kids pick up on those cues. If you respect yourself enough to show up and dress for the job of being a mom all day, your kid or you don't, kids definitely pick up on that. I have had so many clients over the years that say, my mom never really got dressed and she never really taught me. I would come home from school and she'd be in her pajamas and I, you know, when they were tiny, whatever, but some of them had talked about how when they got older in high school and their mom still weren't dressed at three o'clock when they got home, like, okay, what are you doing all day? So they didn't take their mom that seriously. Like, does she really care about herself or not? And that led to clients who really didn't understand style. Was it important? How do I do it? And they did not have that role model, which you have the chance to do it differently for your kids, to be that role model. And it, like in motherhood, in anything else, in any other area of life, it shows self-respect. Getting dressed, taking care of yourself definitely shows that you have a certain level of self-respect without saying a word. Um, okay, I think that's it. I think I've gone through all of my notes. I want to make sure that you have set your style standards, you have a very clear vision and put that vision into a board and you could print it out, you could put it on your phone, put it somewhere where whether it's digital or printed where you can see it every day. I'm super excited to come back tomorrow and we're gonna be talking about becoming and I have a really, really fun exercise for you tomorrow. 
and I am loving your outfit so far today. Keep showing up. I love today. I'm going to call out Sharla. Sharla posted her photo. Also shout out to Kayla for finally getting your full length mirror. I'm so proud of you. It's and then Sharla, the reason I'm bringing her up is she took her photo, super cute outfit. But after taking her photo in the mirror, she posted another photo and said, after looking at that picture, I noticed a few tweaks I needed to make. And the, the subtle difference in picture one and two were so obvious. They were subtle if you didn't really know anything about style, but she knows. And she made those little tweaks and it was like, whoa, okay, now it looks really polished and pulled together. Not that the first picture looked bad at all. It was still a really cute outfit. But taking the time for those little details in photo two, if you guys want to look in day two and look at Charlotte's outfit and what I'm talking about, you can see that in the Facebook group. It is amazing how the full length mirror is like our best tool in style. So make sure you've got your vision and you've got your full length mirror and get ready for day three. I'll see you guys back here tomorrow.